Hi everyone, my name is Nick and today it's time for my houseplant tour for winter slash spring 2021. As always, I'm going to go around and show you every single plant and include every single name on screen. And of course, these videos get longer and longer every time I film a tour. So we are in it for the long haul today. There is certainly a lot to see. So thank you so much in advance for watching. I really hope you enjoy and I really hope you get some ideas and inspiration from this. I want to start off today's plant tour in the living room, which has a lot going on as you can see. There are two west facing windows over in that area. And if I pan over to the left, there is one south facing window that has a lot of light as you can see. But I want to start off this houseplant tour in an area of my home that I think many of you are probably the most familiar with, which is my plant corner right here. And I can attribute all of the light and growth in this corner due to the Soltech Solutions aspect light. I do have a discount code, which I'll include on screen as well as in the description. If you want to get 15% off one of these yourself, I really do swear by it. All of the light that it provides really does cause all of this luscious growth right here to be so lush. And if it wasn't there, it would not be like this because of course there is just not enough light in this corner. So before I had this light here, there was really just like one or two plants that were just uh, stringing along with some very sad growth. But now we have like 40 plants in this area that are just absolutely flourishing. Really all of them are doing pretty fantastically. And I would like to start off actually with my Raphidophora tetrasperma because as you can see here, the lower leaves, which are you know very old at this point, are starting to get a little tired, but there is a whole bunch of growth up top that is very, very lush. And I am going to have to actually cut it back very soon because all of the light is down here, so all of that up there really just does not have any light to feed off of. So you can see the leaves are actually getting kind of smaller, but because this plant is such a vigorous grower, I would not mind at all cutting this thing back completely because I have seen what it can do in such a short amount of time. Also growing on the trellis, I have this uh, Philodendron hostatum. This is the narrow form. You can see it kind of crawling up and around. There's also this Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. Got the nicest, newest leaf hiding back here. It does actually work its way all the way down to the front with some nicer leaves from when I purchased the plant, but of course, it's had to acclimate to my home. I also have a variegated Monstera, just the Monstera Deliciosa Albo Marginata, or not Albo Marginata, Albo Variegata. You guys know what it is. Everybody knows what this plant is, but uh, it's just trying to get acclimated to this trellis, but honestly, it hasn't put off more than just this leaf since I moved it here like six, mon six months ago. These plants are truly slow growers. I do have two plants in the pot. You can probably barely see this one down here that just has some new growth coming in, which I'm happy to see that green on there because that first leaf came in with just that white. I know it's a little blurry, but you don't want those white leaves. I also have a Hoya carnosa down here, just your standard Hoya carnosa. It's kind of hiding behind this Raphidophora decursiva which I actually have down inside the crate there, but you know, I knew this leaf was gonna get some good light here, so I'm not too concerned, but honestly, I don't think this is going to be living here for a very long time, so that's totally fine. Then I have this Anthurium, school of firms getting in the way, Anthurium Padata Radiatum. It's got a couple leaves. I'm actually bringing this one back from near death, and it's doing very, very well. I might as well show you while it's blocking this philodendron squamiferum, which is known to have these uh, fuzzy, very freaky red petioles, but I absolutely love them. I think it's fantastic. I just love to give them a squeeze. Let's work our way over. So I have this Aglinema chocolate. Of course, we have a lot of plants in our home here, so it's going to be kind of difficult to give you a good look at all of these but you can always Google them. I'll put every name on screen. This is an Agli name of Red Emerald right here. Really such a showy houseplant. I love this and I would recommend it to everybody. The red color is phenomenal. I do think it's getting kind of blown out from the, the aspect light, but it, it's really stunning. I do have some other things. Let's see, right up here, there's a Syngonium. I think this is a Syngonium. It might be a philodendron. People tell me it's a Syngonium tri-leaf wonder, but you know, I never really know. I purchased it as a Syngonium, but every plant I purchased from this place was not what it was. So it could be something else entirely different. And then I have this Hoya, uh, Ban Yang Yoi, I think, you know, I'm not good at pronouncing this, 
but I really love this red coloration that it's getting on the leaf from that Soltech Solutions light, so that's great. And Philodendron Pink Princess, this is the one that I've been propagating off of, so I think soon I might be taking this cutting, but I might let it actually go one more leaf because this leaf really isn't that impressive. I have a Philodendron Bloody Mary hiding behind it, which almost probably looks exactly like it. So this is Pink Princess and then this is Bloody Mary. I did just cut a bunch of cuttings off of it because it was coming up pretty high and it was blocking my Amidrium Zippolanium, which of course, sorry about that light. And we do have some brown tips on this one leaf here, but this is a leaf that was on this plant when I got it. So we have all this other nice new growth going on. And then in here I have a Hoya Callistophylla. Really, really beautiful Hoya, but it hasn't done a single thing for me yet but it also hasn't died, so that's also what we're looking for. And this filled under my eye. That one leaf is kind of looking a little chlorotic, but the rest of it's looking really, really nice. Kind of works its way down and goes behind my philodendron here, or my calathea. So, sorry, I'm not even filming, but goes all the way around here, down past my calathea orbifolia right here. And I think the last plant I have in this area is this aglianema. I think they call this Aglianema Spring Snow. Really, really beautiful. I really, really enjoy Aglianemas. It's been a, a houseplant that I have really found some love in this past year. So as you can see from the spring snow and the chocolate and the red emerald, there is just so much to love about Aglianemas. So let's move our way over to this window right here. I'll just give you a little bit of a look, try to get it not blurry. So this is a west facing window, as I mentioned. And over here I have this Philodendron Gloriosum. Sorry, a lot of this video is gonna be out of focus, I'm sure. I used to grow this in my bedroom and I wanted to try growing it in the living room and it's actually doing pretty well. I did take a cutting and that cutting you will see in my bedroom, which is also doing really well, but I kind of regret not just potting it up together completely. So I think I actually might end up adding that cutting back, in, back into this pot because I do not need two pots of Philodendron Gloriosum. I just need one fabulous one. I pan up here, oh, there's me. There is a Monstera Siltipicana on the right. I'll step up on the couch. So that one I've had for probably not quite a year, but you know, like eight months. And then this Ripsalis Pentaptera. I think these two hanging planters look really good hanging next to each other. I have an Apicia right here, Apicia Cupriata. Sorry, the sunlight's gonna start playing devil's advocate now that we move into the window area, but the Maybe it'll bring out some beautiful nuances in the foliage, but I really love this uh, Apicia. The Apicia I've been able to care for the longest is this one. Hopefully I can keep it because I really kill like every Apicia I try to grow. They're just like Calatheas. They're beautiful, but they're really difficult. This is a Peperomia trinervus. I really adore this Peperomia. I had one that was a beautiful hanging plant, plant specimen back a couple years ago, but I did kill it because I moved it on top of my refrigerator. Rookie mistake. This is a Pilea repens. It has some really beautiful black foliage, but it's not really handling the winter that well. I think it might actually prefer a little bit more humidity. So it has died back quite a bit, but I'm not gonna get rid of it just yet. This is an Epiphyllum. I don't know if this is Epiphyllum acromanii. This was a gift from one of the patrons who used to come into the plant store where I worked and he loved Epiphyllums and he would just give me a piece of every one that had a chunk fall off. There's also a Hoya macrophylla album marginata with some cat hair and my roommate's hair on it. Just your standard Hoya macrophylla that you're going to see at practically every houseplant store. Also a really nice variegated plant is this Ficus elastica teneki. Tanaka? I don't know. People always tell me I pronounce it wrong, but I don't think I'm ever going to get it right. Really, really beautiful foliage. This used to be like a really popular houseplant. It, I think it still is, but I think it's really got some really stunning foliage. I wish that the sun wasn't you know, playing against us right now. There's a Ahoya australis. I think this is the Brookfield variety. I know there's a bunch of subspecies of Ahoya australis. This one has actually grown all the way up its little teepee, attached onto this uh, jar with a very sad cutting of a Tradescantia in it, and worked its way all the way up, way past this Peperomia viridis variegata, which we'll stop and appreciate for a moment. I don't think we're gonna get a better light of it, but the, the Hoya, as you can see, is still back here, and it's worked its way all the way up to the ceiling. So I am going to have to do something about this because I'm actually a little worried that uh, it's gonna pull this cup hook out of the ceiling because it's not 
you know, a hook that's meant to stabilize plants. I just had it to hold this little jar of water, but now I'm just a little worried it's just gonna yank out of the ceiling. But let's go back down here before we work our way up. I have this Discidia russifolia, just a little tiny plant. A Sansevieria, or Dracaena, uh, Honei, or it's Dracaena, I'm sorry, Sansevieria, well Dracaena, but Sansevieria trifasciata, Honei gold, I believe is what this one is. And then there's a Hoya, crinkles, tinkles, little cutie. This is a Plectranthus ernstii, a really, really interesting uh, Plectranthus. And then I have this ficus audrey, some really striking leaves. I love ficus, they're, they're a bit finicky, but this is a really nice ficus, well, a little bit easier than like the, the ficus lyrata, and the leaves are very fuzzy, which I always appreciate. This is a cutting that I've actually had, believe it or not, even though it's like the teeniest thing ever, this is a cutting I've been growing off of my pink princess, but it's reverted. So if I kind of get it at this angle, you can see. But the leaves, they're so teeny tiny. I don't know what's going on with it. It's kind of cute though. I'm not going to get rid of it. There's a Sansevieria uh, masoniana or whale fin. I know they're teeny tiny, but these are actually like offsets. My friend gave me some cuttings and the cuttings like made babies off the base of the leaf and then the leaves died. So these are all the little babies. There's a Ripsalis back there. It's just a little tiny one. It's like the, the Ferrari one. You can barely see it. Not even going to bother. I have a Ripsalis elliptica right here from my friends at the Potted Elephant, and I ended up mounting it on this little piece of wood here. So I think it looks really fun. This is one of my favorite Peperomias. This is Peperomia quadrangularis. It's got some really, really beautiful vines to it. Of course, the lighting isn't great. Let's try to move over here. Is that any better? I really don't know, but at least you get two angles of it. And I have a very similar one up here that's called Peperomia tetragona. Sometimes they call it Peperomia pudiolata. I really love it. Or the parallel Peperomia or the stilt Peperomia. There's a lot of names for this plant. It's a great one. This is one I've had for probably like three years at this point. And goldfish plant, Nematanthus champagne jam. This is the one that has that really lovely shade of purple on the backside, as you can also see in that light, the leaf that's shining in the light. It's got some new growth. Looking forward to that one growing. It's just one little cutting. Uh, this is my orchid, my Brasso uh, Catalea or something. I forget exactly what it is. Once again, I'll put it on screen. And this is a flower that just is spent. I haven't cut it off yet. And then if I look back there, you can barely, barely, barely see. That's a Peperomia La Laha Trace. And there's also to the left of that a Peperomia Cubensis. Those are just some cuttings I'm growing in some Leca. And then I have um, some Discidia ovata that I'm trying to root to this little uh, piece of wood here with some moss on it. I think I need to water it a little bit more often from the look of those leaves up top that are turning yellow. And this is my Sisis adenopoda. I think they call it Siphostema now. It's got some really lovely fuzzy leaves with a red backside and they really do shine in the light. Um, it's a very vigorous grower in the summertime. I'm really surprised that mine is still hanging on throughout the winter, but I'm not going to complain. There's a Hoya fungii in here in this little vanda basket. I don't think you're going to be able to see it very well. I apologize, but it does have some kind of nice venation to the leaves, as you can kind of see underneath through the sun rays and stuff like that. And I showed you the peperomia already. There's a coconut orchid. My windows are so chock full of plants, it's so hard to show you guys this stuff. But it's a, it's a Maxillaria tenuifolia. And there's a bunch of plants that I actually have growing back here. I think I have most um, of these also growing in my home, but this one in the dead center here in the white pot is a Peperomia bamboo stalks. And a very, very similar one to the right of it is a Peperomia glabella. Of course, you can't really see any of that foliage, but in case you're curious, that's a Peperomia Wolfgang uh, cranii in the terracotta pot. It desperately needs water, as well as a Peperomia caparata in the blue yogurt pot. And I'll try to give you a look at this Hoya obscura in the terracotta pot, but of course, it's a little bit out of reach. So might as well just move up here and show you this uh, Syndapsis silver ann, Syndapsis pictus silver ann. I can tell I need to water this because the leaves at the base of the pot are curly, but if I show you, this plant actually goes all the way around and works its way all the way over to the Soltec Solutions light and kind of grows down there and gets in my way when I'm filming my videos. 
So that's this area. I'm just gonna give you a little bit more of a look while I'm up on the couch. And we're gonna work our way over to this window. So let me just warp over there. So here we are. I have to say, I'm definitely planning on getting rid of that black bookcase soon because it's not me anymore. It was 20 year old me, it's not 26 year old me, but this is a Thematophyllum sprucianum. I really need to give this thing a little bit better light. It's putting off new growth for me. The new growth isn't that extravagant. Of course, this leaf hasn't hardened off yet, so it's not looking like up to par, but I don't know, just some of the older leaves just, you know, make me kind of sad. I think I just need to give it a little bit more light and attention. This is Schifflera actinophylla amate. Highly, highly recommend this plant. It looks a lot like my Natal mahogany, which I know I'm going to forget, so I'm just going to go over to it real quick. This is my Natal mahogany right here, Trichilia emetica. Do you see that? Do you see all of the little bits? I was a bad plant parent. I put it in the shower to water it, and I accidentally put the water on hot, and it burned a lot of these leaves. But that was like six months ago and we have some new leaves coming in. So yeah, really great plant. Just really needs to be watered a lot. So I just throw it in the shower like every week or two and practically takes care of it. I do have some of uh, Pippinum aureum going, growing up this trellis right here. It's just some golden pothos. And then up in the hanging pot is a Tetrastigma voinierianum. I'm trying to actually get it from a good angle. Of course, all you're seeing is these two brown leaves, but there's a lot of foliage on this plant that looks great. I really do love this. They call this chestnut vine, I think. It's just really my vibe. It's a, it's Nick plant. It's a Nick plant. This is a philodendron painted lady. It's still kind of acclimating to my home. It's doing fine, but I um, huh, can't really see it that well. But, you know, got some browning here and there, but, you know, that's kind of to be expected when I bring something home and it's got to acclimate. This is a Schifflera... Um, actin actinophylla dazzle. It looks a lot like an arboricola, and I once again have to apologize for this lighting. You're gonna hear it a lot from me. I think you can get the gist though. So this will look a lot like this one day, but variegated, that is actually what it is, but this is literally just a tiny little plantlet that I got that's just a cutting. So in due time. I do have a Calathea mosaica down here. This one's not looking as great as my other one though. This is one of the ones that I got from Costa Farms. Um, and then up here is a little itty bitty Hoya pneumolarioides. Please focus. Please focus. It's not going to do it with my voice. I got to use my finger. Um, really hasn't done much. I have another one that's a little bit bigger. This is dirty, first of all, but this is a Peperomia elongata. It's a bunch of Peperomias that kind of have this similar look, but I really like this one. I got it from Steve's Leaves. Really nice plant. I've had this one for kind of a while. I really do enjoy it. Let's just work up here real quick before I forget. This is Schifflera uh, actinophylla nova. So I do have three Schifflera actinophyllas right in the same area, which I really enjoy for some reason. This, I love this. Honestly, if you were to ask me what is my favorite plant at the moment, I'd say for like the past three months, I would answer that question with Schifflera actinophylla nova. This is a Nick plant. This is my vibe. This is everything that I want, everything that I need. It's everything that I have. So I'm just a really big fan. It really does change this window. If I step back and you can really see the scale that this plant affects this whole window and area, I think it really does just add such pizzazz. But let's get back in. I do have a Hoya Sunrise. It does not look like a Hoya Sunrise, but it is a Hoya Sunrise. It's just, it's looking really bad. I tried to like give it a lot of light because I know they turn like red in a lot of light, but it kind of just fried. So I moved it to a west facing window. It was in a south facing window. So hopefully it kind of recovers. This is a Sansevieria uh, Cylindrica Bonkel, the starfish plant. I love that one. Oh, my Schaeffler is just getting in my way, but it's okay because I love it. This is a Peperomia Pereschii folia. I have it in the penis pot. I love that, it's by group partner. It's got a butt too, but I kind of like the front better. Wink, wink. Um, let's see, I have this Syndapsis Silver Splash. Oh my god, we're like literally going through the weeds right now. It's got a little bit of a different variegation than the, um, I just want to get it in focus, than the Syndapsis Pictus and the Silver Ann. It's a little bit more enigmatic, I'd say, or like pixelated. Peperomia Kimnachii. This one is working its way all over my window. That and the Peresci Folia, and of course the Schifflera. But that and the Presque Folia are just like wandering all around the window. Like that's Presque Folia, but like here's some Kimnachii down here. It's just going all over the place. 
And then this one that's also getting in my way here is a Syngonium Chia Pence. I really, really love this plant. It's really uh, nice. I kind of prefer it over the Syngonium Macrophyllum, which you will see shortly. There's two more plants behind there. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to really get to them. The one on the right is a Sansevieria Kirkii, the copper tone variety. And the one on the left is a Hoya Pubicalix Pink Silver. And hiding all the way in the back corner there is one of my tried and trues. It's my Sansevieria Bantel Sensation, which is just like an absolutely fake looking plant. I'm sorry, I just want you to get a good look at it. But you can see how fake it looks. I can't believe I've had this thing for years. And if we begin to work our way up, you'll see this coin-shaped plant right here, which is very, very nice. I absolutely love this one. This is Peperomia boi varnii. It's very, very, very similar to Peperomia hope. The only difference that I can notice is that the leaves are just a little bit more blue, gray, green than Peperomia hope, which has more of a like lightish pale green leaf. So really the only difference I do not think you're going to notice a difference on camera at all. So um, there is a Pseudoripsalis ramulosa right here. I had this in my south-facing window in my bedroom, and it was r bright red, and I moved it here because I thought that the bright red would be such great contrast. But even this western-facing window is just not enough light to hold up that color. So it did turn green again, but I think I kind of prefer it here anyway. Then in this pot, there is actually two plants you're going to see. This Peperomia prostrata right here, which, you know, I just don't think we have the lighting to really uh, display at the moment. But there's also some Peperomia polybotria all going throughout here. The coin-shaped Peperomia. I would apologize about the light, but I know people are just going to tell me to stop apologizing for it, so I'm not going to bother. Um, this is a Dischidia, Dischidia, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Jerry, they call it. I want to really get up there and see if you can see. It's a really, really nice plant. It is very dark, but it's a very, very nice plant. I actually have a couple of these. I think sometimes they call it like Dyscidia oeantha or Dyscidia green cascade. Those might be different varieties. We have a philodendron uh, branchianum right here. It's got a lot more up top, but I think this is the best you're going to see of it. And there's also an orchid. Looks like a very spider planty orchid, and of course it's dark, but uh, that is a Symbodium. Don't know the variety. I just want to move down real quick to show you this clump. The Brantianum's getting in our way. This is a clump of Talansia uh, funkii? funkii? I don't know how to pronounce it. There is a couple plants kind of trailing down the side of this too. This is a Philodendron lemon lime, and some Epipnum aureum, mandula. Is that how they pronounce it? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, there is some Tradescanthia pallida up in here. This is the purple heart plant. I really need to get in there and clean it out though, because this thing is always dying back. Spider warts and, well, Tradescanthias are the most common ones. These are plants that always have browning on them, so you constantly have to clean them up. I really don't think that they are very viable house plants, but you know, they still grow in the home. They just need a little bit more attention and cleaning up and stuff like that. This is an Aeschcananthus of, gosh, I can't remember the, the radicans, I think it is, uh, variegata. It's a variegated version. Of course, most of the vines have reverted at this point, but I just really love its jungly vibe just hanging down the side of this shelf here. I think it's a total vibe. I absolutely love it. I don't think there's anything in Wally right here. I call him Wally. He looks like a character from a show I like called Wally. No, I call him Wally, but there's nothing in Wally right now. And a philodendron... Imperial Red, it's got really big, it's gotten really, really big. And uh, Pothos, Epipenum Orium, just your Jade Pothos. Let's move on down to the shelf here. Next to Alexis, we have this uh, Aglinema Silver Queen, and that's where the Philodendron was growing. There's a Epipenum Orium, just golden, just standard, I don't think it has a name. There is a Maranta in here, but it's died back, so It'll come back to life at some point. And then this is just another Aglinema commutatum. This is the species version of Aglinema commutatum, though. So this one's a little bit different than the other ones. Alrighty. Then I have this circle shelf right here, which we're really not going to bother with because it just has a Sansevieria arenbergii, which is the only name I'll probably put on screen. Also has a Cebu blue pothos. You'll see more of that. And some uh, Monstera Peru, but that is just some cuttings that are just not taking as you can very clearly see. So if we move up into this area, this is above my desk. This is a, what is this? This is a bromeliad. This is bromeliad. It's not called bromeliad. It's called Neerogelia, Nick. It's Neerogelia zoe. 
It's got a couple pups, which I really enjoy. I used to have a spider plant here and that didn't really work out. So I think this bromeliad is probably the better option. Unlike that lighting option, which is not the better option. This is Aeschgenanthus longicollis. This is the Black Pagoda lipstick plant. It's got some really stunning backsides. Oh my gosh, the lighting. I think I chose the wrong day to film this video. But you can see the patterns on the leaves. They are really quite striking. I am such a big fan. And I have a Syndapsis over here. This is Syndapsis pictus exotica. There is a Sansevieria up in there. Totally need to get up there and water it. Can zoom in a little bit, I guess. Haven't utilized that yet. Uh, that is just Sansevieria cylindrica, just a standard one. Definitely needs water. Oh, we went too far. Okay, so what do we got? Behind the computer is a Sansevieria black gold. It's just one little piece left. It's so dark back here. It literally only has one piece that survived. So probably, you know, might get replaced soon. This is a, a Pipernum Pinatum Cebu Blue. I have this growing up the moss pole. I am absolutely not doing this any justice. I've kind of been inspired lately to perhaps just take all of my Cebus and pot them together soon because you're, you're going to see I have like six of them. So this is Monstera adansonii. This is the narrow leaf form. And these are some really, really old leaves on here. They are looking pretty tired. I've had this plant for like three years now. It's, it's getting really old. But um, there is some really fun leaves up in the window that have, oh, I can zoom in again, that have gotten pretty big. They're kind of far up there, but you can get a pretty good look that they have some really nice size to them. And okay, 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 okay. So let's go back down here. This is my desk. I have this dead air plant. It was a Tillandsia. Well, I guess it still technically is a Tillandsia Rickenbachii, but it's dead. This is a Peperomia serpens, and this is a Hoya. This is Hoya Sp Affinity Bretonia. I think this is what they used to sell as like the DS70, and everyone was like, no, it's not DS70. These are actually pots that I made, two little planters that I made. Of course, displayed next to the aloe frost penis pot, which, you know, puts my planters to shame. I might as well show you guys. I have my little planter selection down here. Half of them are crap. Not all of them are planters. These are like things I've made myself. This little match striker that I made. I made a couple of them. I really love this planter. Isn't it just so cute? I love it. It's mine. I'm keeping it, but oh, this is not what this video is about, Nick. Okay, so this is an orchid. This is, is this epidendrum? I think it's Epidendrum ibaguens. Don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. It's the poor man's orchid. I love the name. It's so humorous. This is a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. I think the adage that they use to tell the Crimson Queen and the Crimson Princess apart is that the queen wears her crown, so she wears the white on the outside of the leaf, and the princess wears her gown, so it has it on the inside of the leaf. So just a fun little thing to think about. This is this is discolor. This thing is not a winter grower. This thing usually completely defoliates in the winter. I was talking about my sister's adenopoda and how it typically does that too. Also, the cat has definitely chewed on it. I am realizing right now he's definitely jumped up onto the desk and chewed on this plant. Uh, it's fine, but uh, I don't really expect anything out of this until the springtime if it holds on. There is a Raphidophora hayi back there. I've had that one for a little while now. It's not really the most adequate house plant, I will admit, but it is a really cool plant. I really do enjoy growing it. And there's a philodendron right here, which is like practically about to tip over. I literally have the pot stuck under that pot right there so that it physically can't tip over. Uh, and this is a philodendron mexicanum. It's got some, all the leaves look different. It's like every single leaf looks different. Um, I don't know. It could not even be a mexicanum, but that's just how it was sold to me. We've had this happen a lot. Um, okay, so there's a lot going on in this window. I don't even know where to start. I guess let's start down on the shelf here, or the crate or whatever. So this is a philodendron, I guess, Jose Buono. It's got a lot going on. It goes all the way up here. But these leaves are kind of smaller because I brought it home and then it didn't put off leaves for a couple times. So it was just like, I don't know. And now it's like, okay, I think so. So now it's just giving me some little ones, but I might just cut it off and, you know, have it start over. And then propagate, of course, the top. This is a Hoya Abavada. It's kind of hiding. It works its way over into the window a little bit, but hasn't grown immensely for me. I think I'd really like to give this one a little bit more attention. This is a Syngonium uh, Podophyllum albovarigatum. Some of the white leaves are starting to get a little tired. Actually, that's not good. I didn't even know this, this leaf. This is the newest leaf. Sorry for that truck going by. This is the newest leaf. 
and it's not in focus, but this is the new sleeve and it's all white. So I am probably going to go onto the stem here and I can see very clearly, I don't know if you guys can because it's blurry, I apologize. Um, this is very white. So that stem is completely white. So I know that that's like an albino stem. So I should actually end up cutting this plant back into this stem, the lower stem. So I should like sacrifice this one leaf, I'm pretty sure, and cut it down here. And then it should shoot off from new growth, some new growth from this node. I apologize for that leaf blocking. And it's not really, it's not what this video is about, but I could salvage this plant and just not have to worry about just putting off a bunch of white leaves that are just going to turn brown and die. But I really do enjoy the Syngonium. It's a little overrated. But honestly, out of like all the overrated plants, I do think this one is like the most gorgeous. So like, look at this leaf. Look at this leaf right here. This new leaf. Isn't that so fun? Okay. You can't really see it. It's blurry. It doesn't matter. So this is a Seropegia linearis. I think it's like linearis dubilis. I don't know exactly. Uh, Sansevieria pinguicula. This is the really fun one I talked about in a recent uh, houseplant haul video that will like put off the babies. Like this is where a baby was, but the seller cut it off. It would like come all the way off and just be like a Sansevieria, just like hanging out over here, just like not in the pot. It's so fun. Um, this is a philodendron. This is probably your best bet of seeing it. This is a philodendron Campos Portoanum. Gosh, really, really bad day to choose to film this. Should have picked a rainy day. But um, it's got some really nice leaves that kind of rub me the way of like a philodendron micans. It's got some really nice red blushing to it. And down here, oh, this is the Syngonium uh, Macrophyllum. Uh, this is the plain green version of Syngonium macrophyllum. Let's try to get it in focus. Of course, the sun's not helping. Uh, I just think it's a little, it doesn't have that oomph that the Chia Pence has. I like the, chi the Chia Pence's leaves. They're thicker, and they're bigger, and it's just a more robust plant. So, I don't know, just preference, personal preference. This is Philodendron pedatum right here. Absolutely love these leaves. And then I have, this is a Alocasia reginula red velvet. There is... Uh, Syndapsis trubii, dark form right here, literally has not done a single thing for me after I cut off that uh, long runner, which I am realizing was a mistake. Okay, so this is a Sansevieria hollii. They call that the baseball bat Sansevieria. Sometimes they call it the fat boy Sansevieria, but this is 2021, so I'm not sure if that's acceptable anymore. This is a Monstera saltipicana that's working its way all the way around the window. You can see it back there, but... Uh, I have another one, in our, and you saw the other one. This is a Cissus rotundifolia, really fun Cissus, a lot different than many other Cissus. It's much more succulent. I actually have two of them right in the same window. There's this much larger one up here, but one of my good friends gave me this little one here, so of course I have to keep it. But now that I'm looking at this, I'm like, why don't I just pot them up together and then just save myself a little bit of space? And let's go stay up here before we work our way back down. This is a Tradescantia nanoak. Um, another spider wart that I just do not think is a really great house plant. It just, I don't know, they just don't look perfect. Like, I mean, your house plants never have to look perfect. I love some character, but just see all the browning and all the, the spindliness. It's just, I don't think that's really my cup of tea. This is a Hoya, I can't tell you if this is Hoya Wayedii or Hoya Kentiana, but I can tell you that it's the variegated version at least. And I have another Hoya uh, Macrophylla Alba Marginata, just another one of these. I think this one's grown maybe a little bit more than the other one that was on the hoop, but I have this one hanging up, so it's not gonna be on a hoop. Uh, there's an orchid hiding back there, that kind of like grassy looking thing with the, the yellow bits hanging down the back. That's a, a Bretonia Shelob Tolkien. And in front here is a fantastic fern, actually. This is an Agliomorpha. Don't recall the species name, but of course I will put it on screen. I have an Anthurium up here. Anthurium uh, gracile, gracile, I don't know how to pronounce it. Probably need to water it, it's in some sphagnum moss, so it needs to be watered all the time. And then this is a Talansia streptophylla. A really cool little Talansia. Alrighty, let's go back down here. Um, so in here is my Monstera Peru. And then there is a not so happy looking um, Hoya Hindu rope, but honestly, it hasn't really done anything either, so I might be jumping the gun, calling it not too happy. Okay, so now we got a lot of light coming in, so let's work with this, but I have a Hoya pubicalix right here. I think this is Royal Hawaiian Purple, not positive. This is a Begonia, my special angel. Another Raphidophora decursiva right here. Then there's a Philodendron hostatum. It's kind of hiding back here. Um, 
working its way everywhere. But uh, there's a Cebu Blue Pothos Epipernum Orium Cebu Blue and another one of my planters that I made. Um, okay, let's work our way up. Now, this is a Hoya Shepardii on the right with a Syndapsis Pictus Argerius right here that definitely needs some water because you can see it's curled. So I love that Syndapsis just tell you when they need water and they recover very, very easily. There is a bunch of plants in here. Um, this is Syndapsis Pictus Silver Ann. There is some Lemon Lime Philodendron Heteraceum or Scandens. There's some Cebu Blue Pothos and there's even more Cebu Blue Pothos in a pot actually. And then I have some uh, Neon Pothos, the Epipernum Orium Lemon Lime or Neon, can't remember exactly. This is my roommate's plant. This is my roommate's Pothos. This is her Epipernum Orium. It's huge actually. It goes all the way down to the ground and goes behind some of the other plants that we have down here. I have two Hoyas up here. On the right is another one of those Hoya um, Affinity to Bertonii, or whatever used to be the, the DS70, and then, or used to be mislabeled as DS70 by Costa Farms. I think DS70 is still a real plant. Uh, this is a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess, so she wears her gown. And I have a couple more plants in this area. I'm like starting to get a little overwhelmed in this area. I'm like, wow. There's a lot of plants here. Okay, so down here, this is a Peperomia scandens variegata, and I have a Hoya retusa. This is just a couple strands. I guess I didn't water one of my plants enough and I kind of lost some of them, but there's still a couple strands left. And there's also a Zamiacolca zamiafolia raven hiding inside the crate back there, kind of just like poking its way out. I really love the way it kind of contrasts with the Peperomia scandens, the Epipernum, Pinatum Sabubu, and the, that was gibberish, but, um, and the <laughs> Aglinema red something. The red, what? It's wishes, Aglinema wishes. Sometimes they call it Aglinema ruby. I, I don't even know what the real name is. Honestly, all these Aglinemas that have different names, they're probably like different plants, but they have like the slightest difference to them. Like maybe one has more red on the leaves, one has like a little bit less red or has like a pink hue. Um, they all have different names. They're all probably different plants, but honestly, if you're close, I'll accept it. This is an Anthurium andreanum right here, which I've got to pull off that dead leaf, but yeah, just your classic Anthurium, you know, with your standard little flowers right here. I think this plant's very heavily overlooked specifically by aroid growers because I think they think it's just a little too boring. So this is a philodendron red emerald. It is taller than me at this point, actually. It's huge. I can't believe how much it's grown since I got it. And a ficus elastica. This is just the green version right here. Oh my gosh, I'm realizing I totally skipped plants. Okay, we're going back because I'm realizing I totally skipped my, <laughs> which you can't even see any of these plants, which is why I skipped them. The ficus elastica ruby, which is back there in the corner. You can see some of the red foliage up top. Oh my gosh, I skipped so many. So there's a philodendron tripartitum in here. I love these leaves. I love these leaves. I love these leaves. They're so incredible. Um, there, oh my gosh, there's so many more. There's a Pilea peperomioides. I almost wish I actually skipped over these, so I had less to talk about because I am filming a lot right now. This is a Pilea peperomioides, an asparagus. Oh uh, gosh, what kind is that? I think that's the, mm, what is it? The retrofractus? I think it's what they call a foxtail fern. And there is a Ficus Oliei Gold. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how I'm gonna show you these. I feel like every time we do a houseplant tour, there's just so much more. So it's this little plant right here with these like long elongated leaves that are variegated. If you watch my videos regularly, I'm sure you've seen most of these in my videos up close. But now you get to see where they are in my home. So there's a Peperomia Ancana back here. Very, very fuzzy. I love that one, but you'll see another one. And my Begonia Maculata you are not going to get a better look of that than that. Um, okay, so this is a Euphorbia Garoldii, so it looks just like Euphorbia Millii with um, the, the crown of thorns with these flowers, but it doesn't have any thorns, which I really like. Let's see if you can see it any better over here, kind of, but you're not going to get the full gist of the plant. Honestly, you're not going to get the full gist of 90% of these plants because they're just a jumbled mess. This is the Ming Asparagus, so this is Oh, I don't even know the name for these. It's asparagus something. I'm going to put it on screen. I think they call it the Ming asparagus, but this is just such a vibe. Isn't that such a vibe? I love it. And then, of course, can't skip my uh, thematophyllum. This leaf looks horrible. <laughs> my thematophyllum bipanatophytum. Better leaf right here. It's just your classic split leaf philodendron that they call it. Okay, I, th 
I think that's everything. Oh, wait, no, that's not everything. There is a Hoya Iris Marie down here. And I actually did take some cuttings off of it recently because it was growing all over the place. So now you can see it's got some new growth coming off there, but can't get any closer than that. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Okay, so we ended up here, the Ficus Elastica. Okay, so there's this, I think this is a Ripsalis Pilocarpa. And then, we're in my kitchen, by the way. I'll give you guys a better look soon. This is a Ripsalis Awaldianda right here. Oh my god, please focus. Okay. And so this is my kitchen window. I definitely have a couple more plants I still need to show you in the living room. But we're in the kitchen now, so we're just going to go with it, okay? So this is a south-facing window. So the other window... That one was south facing and this one is south facing as well. So moving down into the window behind the speaker here, I have Hoya Cariae. Got some nice foliage up here, kind of hiding behind my Talanzia, my Talanzia, uh, gosh, I was going to say Xerographica, uh, Talanzia Tectorum. I love this Talanzia. If you're going to grow any air plant in your home, try this one out and put it in a really bright window and water it like every two weeks. If you've killed air plants before, you're not going to kill this one. It's amazing. 10 out of 10 would recommend. This is Kalanchoe Uniflora. This is such an underrated Kalanchoe. If you're into like String of Hearts or Hoya or anything like that, I think that you would really like this. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get a better light. And now the rainbow from my pot of elephant stickers coming through. Oh, you can barely see it, but I absolutely love my rainbow sticker. Um, okay, okay, okay. We got a lot going on in here. So this is a Serapegia. Uh, woody eye, linearis, woody eye, variegata. It's getting really long, getting really <laughs> untamable. <laughs> a lot, a lot's going on here. We got a lot of plants, and a lot of them are getting just a little too long. And I still love them, but sometimes they're just, you know, a little too long. And sometimes they're just a little too hard to get an actual picture of. But I think you guys know what this plant looks like. This is string of pearls, Curio rallianus or Senecio rallianus. A really long plant. I'm like worried that this is gonna start to like poop out on me soon. I've had it for so long and typically string of pearls are not this robust, I will say. Okay, so let's go back into the window. This is a Kalanchoe, I think that's Tubiflora. And there's a type of Euphorbia, variegated Euphorbia right here. Not sure on the species. It was one that like a, a local grower was really excited about. So I thought I would give it a try. I'm not much of a Euphorbia person. And then this is a Clinia or a Stapelia. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Stapelia. It's Senecio stapelii formis. So it looks like a Stapelia. Um, it is the pickle plant. It's super fun. There is a Peperomia dolliborformis back here. I do think it's on its way out. Um, however, this Peperomia graviolens ruby glow is killing it. It's doing super well. Uh, such a great succulent. Highly recommend it. And this is another. Kalanchoe right here. It's like Kalanchoe, like Marniera or something. Something like Marinera, but it's not Marinera. So, of course, I'll put it on screen. Another Sansevieria Kirkii Copper Tone. This is a, I can never pronounce it. It's like Kalanchoe uh, Digramontiana or something. It's just the mother of thousands. It's nothing special. And this is Adramiscus Cristatus. Peperomia Oh my gosh, columella. This is some type of stapelia. The guy who gave it to me, which was that epiphyllum guy from the shop, uh, he was very excited about this and he told me it was a rare stapelia, but honestly, I don't know if it's a rare stapelia. So, uh, this is red headed Irish women. I think it's a mammalaria. We have a mealybug <laughs> infested Crassula ovata, so I should rip that out. But there's also a Haworthia fasciata as well as an Acanthocereus tetragonus, which is a fairy castle cactus, and that is an incredible cactus. I highly recommend growing it. From somebody who does not love cacti, I recommend it. This is a Pylocereus azureus, I think. My Serapeg um, yeah, my Serapegia is blocking it, but it's the blue cactus. There is a little tiny Hoya banyong yoi down here, as well as a Cryptanthus, pink star Cryptanthus bivitatus. A tiny, 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 Ripsalis, um, can't remember the name, Prismatica, and then Zerosicio Stengai, working its way around, and a Kalanchoe, once again, this is the, the blue Kalanchoe, the Tomentosa, Kalanchoe Tomentosa. So I really love succulents because there's 
a lot of color. There's really a lot of color going on in this window right here. I do have a lot of light with these south facing windows, so if anything's gonna love that, it's these color ridden succulents. So I also have some Ripsalis. I think that's more elliptica. It's just a lot tinier than the other one I have. This is a totally chlorotic Hoya lacunosa in comparison to the other Hoya lacunosa I have directly next to it, which looks so much better. And I also have a Hoya Wyetii in the top there, but you can't really see it because this philodendron bipinifolium is sort of blocking it. I have a couple more plants hanging up here. This is a Senecio macroglossus variegatus, the wax ivy, another plant that I would recommend to anybody, such an incredible houseplant, as well as this Discidia. I think they sell this as Oeantha variegata. I'm pretty sure that's not correct though. I think that's just the name it has in the trade, but that's what I'm putting on screen. This is Ripsalis uh, bassifera. I'm pretty sure. Not gonna get much better than that. Okay, so over here, we have Peperomia Hoffmanii, fantastic Peperomia that's next to the Hoya Lacunosa, which is on the shelf right here, just next to the window. My camera is fantastic. It's really doing a great job at staying in focus. I always incorrectly call this the fishtail cactus, but it's the fern leaf cactus. It's Chrysocardium, um, no, Selena Sirius Chrysocardium. I apologize. This is Peperomia Argyria. The watermelon peperomia looking fabulous i've had this one for years and i have a phalaenopsis orchid just hanging up there in my mounted plant sad area because there's just one i do have more mounted plants we will get to them shortly i do have to show you guys down here which is completely getting blown out by the sunlight um, this is a primalina young fuensis on the right and on the left is a primalina sinensis very, very similar plants, very, very closely related to African violets. I love primalinas. They are great and they really, really seem to love the setting here on my counter. I have this Sansevieria trifasciata gold flame here on the right. It's got some very exaggerated um, yellow variegation, very similar to like the variegated whale fin. There is a Hoya pubicalix right here. I think this one is the splash variety and a ficus elastica. Okay, I'm going to do something daring and I'm going to turn around and hopefully I don't forget that I still have more of my kitchen to share with you, but I really would like to show you guys my mounts, my plant mounts. So up there is kind of a sad orchid. It belongs to my roommate, so, you know, maybe she can revive it. Uh, this is a Discidia that I need to water. Oh my gosh, this thing always needs water. This is Discidia lanceolata. Probably made a mistake by mounting it because it's constantly in need of water. Uh, there's two Talansias on here. I'm actually not sure what this one is, but I know that this one's a Talansia, Iananthe, one of the most common types of Talansia. And I really, really love the way that this looks here on this little plant mount that I made. I actually had a third air plant here, but I recently killed it. Air plants are not the easiest thing. This is a Discidia Oeantha right here, or Green Cascade, or Jerry, I don't even know what they call it, but that's what it is. This is a Hoya Serpens, not an easy plant. Really not an easy plant. This is Discidia Imbricata. I love this one. And then, oh, we're getting tight. Okay, so let's move over here. So this is a Hoya Methide. I know, don't really know how to pronounce it. It's like French. This is a Discidia Okimanata. I love this one. I haven't even paid attention to it recently, but I love it. I really love it. And I have two staghorns, two Platycerium bifurcatums. I've had this one for a while, as you can probably tell from the way it looks a little worse than this one I just recently replaced my crocodile fern that was up here because I forgot about it and I killed it. But, um, you know, I love staghorns. And there's another fern right here. It's some kind of like fern. <laughs> I don't know what kind of fern it is. I'll find out and I'll put the name on screen. And I have, last but not least, in this area is, let's zoom in, this Dishidia russifolia, which I can guarantee you pro could probably use a drink because it's all the way up there and I'm all the way down here. Okay, so over on my refrigerator, I guess we have a couple down below, but let's start with the refrigerator. I just said it. So this is a, a philodendron heteraceum lemon lime, as well as, of course, another Epipernum pinatum, Cebu blue. And there is a Ripsalis flocosa kind of hiding behind them. 
Then this is a Peperomia viridis, some kind of it, but that's not what's growing in that pot. It's actually in the pot next to it. But this pot is a Peperomia verticillata, which goes all the way around. It's a little messy. Uh, and this is a Peperomia clusii folia red margin, as well as the Sansevieria um, trifasciata. I think they call this silver streak, but mine, I'm not giving it good light. So it's getting some kind of ugly leaves. And up here, on top of my refrigerator, there is an Aglaenema commutatum silver bay. Another one of those Aglaenema commutatums that's not looking as good as the other one I showed you, as well as a Zamia colchis, Zamia folia. Um, that's it, just Zamia colchis, Zamia folia. So that's a ZZ plant. So I'm just gonna give you guys another look at the kitchen over from the hallway area. And then I'm going to pan over back to the living room because I still have to show you more, believe it or not. <laughs> We're, we've been filming for a long time. I'm gonna get tired soon. So I have this whole area right here. I will admit, if there's any area in my apartment that I cannot stand, it's this. Of course, I'm being super critical because I live here and I see this every day. Um, but it's just, you know, plants aren't great to grow up here. The shelves are a little too far away from the window. It's a little too high up to receive some good light. So there's really um, not <laughs> much going on here. It needs a lot of work, but this is a peppernum Orium, just some jade pothos or whatever they call it. Um, there is a Zamia colia, Zamia folia is a micro up there, as well as the Ripsalis paradoxa. Obviously, the Ripsalis needs to move, and clearly, the ZZ plant's not looking that great either. Oh, I just don't have anything good to say about this area. There is a Syndapsis pictus up there, that's probably fine, and a Hoya pubicalix that has been here for a really long time as well, that I can also guarantee needs some water because I never remember to water it. And a Ripsalis pilocarpa. There's a couple sad Sansevierias back there. We're not going to bother with them. Um, I have a little bit of a plant area going on over here, though, which obviously is going a lot better. But you know what? If I've learned anything from living here for three years, it's that I can't stand unfinished wood. And I made a huge mistake <laughs> buying unfinished wood products. I know I could stain them. The shelves I can't stain. But it's just, it's just too late. It's time to move on. So this is a philodendron burl marks. I love this plant. I think it's great. And it's such a common plant. Like literally it's a landscape philodendron, just like your uh, thematophyllum bipinatophytum and such. Uh, so it's much more readily available. And I think people kind of pass over it for that reason, but I absolutely love it. I've had this one for like two years now and it's getting nice and tall and growing up my little uh, TP mess that I have for it. So I'm a really big fan. I'm really excited to have this plant for a long time. I feel very confident that just like the philodendron red emerald right there, that it's going to be up to my, my, myself, if not the ceiling in due time. I do kind of want to just give you a better look at this area right here. I am a really big fan of this. I'm sure if you follow me on Instagram, although I like never post on Instagram, I post in this area all the time because it's probably the most photogenic area of my home. But I do have a couple more plants in this area. Uh, this is my uh, famous, I dare to say, Monstera deliciosa uh, with the green variegation. I'm happy that it has a good leaf for you guys today because some of the other leaves aren't looking too great. I think it has like some like leaf bacteria. I think I should really just remove these leaves. As you can see, like this is like the like leaky stuff on it. I really think I should cut these two leaves off and just leave the other three, let it regrow. I could even consider, consider, let's say, cutting it, propagating it and letting it regrow from where, you know, I remove the foliage and, you know, having a nice plant and then, you know, but I just don't know about that right now. That's a lot. This is a Monstera adansonii. This is the wide form. And then this is a Monstera Peru, another one. This one, oh my God, this one used to be so lush. I don't know what's going on, but it's just not loving me lately. It looks fine. I think it's gonna look fine to you guys, but to me who sees it every day and just watched it like lose like 20 leaves over the past like three months. I just don't know. There is a Sansevieria trifasciata Laurentii down there. Probably don't want to give you guys too good of a look because it's a mess down there. Uh, and this is one of my favorite plants. This is Syngonium erythrophyllum Yanocarti Road. I'm just obsessed with these like gothic leaves that have this wine red, like aubergine color here on the back. I love it. And there's this uh, Syndapsis pictus uh, jade satin, they call this. Ask me why this plant is popular. I don't know why but I still love it. Uh, this is a Peperomia scandens. This is like a sport that I'm growing that one of my friends gave me. It's just got some interesting variegation. Not sure how well it's going to show up on camera. I can see it literally not focusing. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to help that. 
okay, you can kind of see it. And then I also comically have just the plain green Scandons right here, which I absolutely love. No shade. This is a Pepperoni, I'm sorry, I gotta always call a Hoya Pepperoni once per video. This is a Hoya Puba Calyx Splash. This thing has literally done nothing for me. I remember buying it back when I worked at the shop because it was just so splashy. I couldn't give it to somebody else, so I bought it. And then this is a Syndapsis Trubii Moonlight and a Philodendron Pink Princess. This is the one that I've been propagating. You know, some new leaves coming in. This is Monstera Subpinata. And then I have a Discidia Numelaria Variegata. And this was sold to me as Hoya Motoskii, but I don't think it's Motoskii. I think it's just like Carnosa or something. But who knows? I don't really know. Okay, oh my gosh. Okay, so that's everything. So we're gonna go over to my bedroom. We're working our way over. Okay, so we're gonna go on in. And we're gonna start off a lot more of exactly what we've been doing. So I guess I'll give you kind of a look. So this is like my bedroom. It's eight by eight. It's super tiny. I literally just have a bed, a TV, and a crap ton of plants. Um, so in here, this is like the grow frame that I have. I'm just gonna shut the door to keep the, the cat who will chew on my plants out. So this is a Peperomia japonica. There's a Hoya sigillatus right here. My friend gave me this like two years ago and I, it hasn't done a single thing. And a Hoya, what is it? Marillii. And then this is a Hoya, I don't know what this is. This was a gift from one of my friends. It's from a Hoya that like his mom had for a really, really long time, like many, many years. Not like when I say many, many years and it's like three years, like this is like 20 years. Um, <laughs> this is a, just a cutting of the Dishidia from my kitchen. This is a, a Hoya Obscura, another cutting. This is a really fun cutting of um, Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, but it's just got some really nice variegation. My friend found this and she was like, I know I have one already, but I just have to get this. And then she gave me a cutting of it because it's very nice of her. Um, okay, so this is a Ficus Triangularis Variegata. And then this is a just, oh gosh, a Hoya Pneumolarioides. Okay, down here, this is, you know what? I always water this and I just think it always looks like it needs water. I don't know, I don't know. I don't think it's doing that hot, but it's an Aglaenema. I think it's called Illumini or something like that. Okay, so now we have the whole shelf area, which I also would like to embarrassingly show you that I literally have, I shouldn't show you my floor too much because it's a mess. I literally have a string of hearts down there, Sarah Peggy Woody Eye, just on the floor because I don't really know where I'm gonna put it. I guess I have a space up there in that corner that I could put it now because I threw out a plant recently, but I don't know. Right now it's down there. So back up here, start at the top, I have this Philodendron Brazil. Then this is Monstera Siltipacana again. I really need to just take a bunch of cuttings off of this one because it's just like a bunch of long vines that are defoliated and then they have just like plant. So I should just cut off the plant and then leave the vines and then maybe the vines will regrow. This is a Philodendron Mayoi. I think I should com combine it with my other one because it's just one spindly vine. And I just don't know if that's my vibe for Philodendron Mayoi. This is uh, Philodendron Mykens. I've had this one for like so long that it's just a mess. Once again, uh, Hoya Crinkle 8, Carnosa is the species. And a couple dying plants back there. I'm just gonna skip over them, ignore them. This video is long enough. Uh, this is a Hoya Australis, and I think this is the Tenuapes variety. And then kind of going all the way down here, but starting of course at the top is some more Seropegia linearis. And this is such a fast growing plant. It's like all the way down here, it's everywhere. Then there is this Monstera Adamsonia. This is the number four variety. Don't know what they call it really in the trade. And a Philodendron Bernardo Pazii. It's difficult to see. It's all the way back there. And then a Tradescantia a Variegated Silamontana. I cannot get up there better. I apologize. And then there's a Hoya Linearis. Really, really nice Hoya. I love it. It's really fun. I guess it's a really popular one lately, but if you can find a, a small pot of it for cheap, I highly recommend it because I know people have been selling like large pots for just top dollar. Okay. Okay. We're going to start off in here. This is so much work, but you know, I'm already over an hour of filming. I'm sure I've edited some of this out, but uh, this is a Hoya Elagiorum. 
and then I have Ahoya David Kamenjii. This is Ahoya Retusa, not even in focus, typical, very on brand. This is Ahoya Carnosa Compacta, so it's the Hindi rope. Okay, so back here is Ahoya Multiflora, it's not in bloom at the moment. I have my Raphidophora Cryptantha, which is still in its nursery pot. And it's well outgrown. It's wooden thing, and I haven't done anything about it yet. Uh, this is a Peperomia bamboo stalks, and then there's a Peperomia. I cannot remember the name. Tingo Maria, Peperomia Tingo Maria, in the glass cloche, with another Peperomia Peresquii folia, kind of back there. And this is a Peperomia moonset, very similar to Encana, just much more green and a little bit thinner. Okay, this is a Peperomia turboensis. There is. Begonia, Erythrophylla. This is the Philodendron White Princess. Then we have Hoya Rotundiflora. More Discidia Imbricata, but in a pot this time. Then some Hoya Fitchii. Really nice. That is uh, Begonia Conchifolia. Then I have the Stefania erecta back here. It's just going everywhere. It's fun. Begonia Milana Bellata. Sorry about the light shining on that. You're not going to be able to see it much better than that. And this is Hoya Croniana. It's flowers for me all the time. Antherium Vicii. Once again, going to have a lot of sunlight when we get close to the window. Just going to have to deal with it. This is a peperomia. Oh, no, it's not a peperomia. It's a philodendron domesticum. At least that's how it was sold to me. Uh-oh. I hear a muffin wants to come into my room. Hi, sweetie. She wants food, but she, she ate it all. Didn't you eat it all, sweet pea? You ate it all. Oh, she's so cute. She wants her food, though, but she ate it all. You ate it all, sweet pea. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so there is, I just watered that, so it's still recovering from that, but that is the Calathea macoyana. Very, very gorgeous foliage, as you can see from that one leaf down there. And this is the type of Peperomia scandens. This is like a silver sport. Once again, don't think it's going to focus. Oh, there you go. You can kind of see it. And then this is Hoya um, Kauyai. Got some really nice leaves, large splashy leaves. I really like it. Okay. Oh, Muffin wants to go out now. Oh, she wants to go out. Okay. Bye, sweet pea. Okay. All right. I'm getting distracted again. Okay. <laughs> Got like a hundred more plants to go. <laughs> this is a Peperomia tetragona right here. You already saw that. This is a Calathea orbifolia. I think I'm going to get rid of that soon. I, the other one is just too much more impressive than that sad dying one. This is some Peperomia, uh, why do I keep calling everything a Peperomia? This is a Hoya. I forget the name of this. Um, I'll include it on screen. It's got like so many different names that it's cycled through. Uh, this is a Hoya Coronaria. Very similar to Peperomia Ancana. I love it. It's very fuzzy. This is a Aglianema Tricolor Echo. And then there is, you know, blown out from the sunlight, but my Calathea Mosaica. And I think this is a great Calathea. I know my other one looked kind of like crap, but this one, I've had this one for like two years now. It looks fantastic. This is a Philodendron Radiatum. Then there is a Maranta Lucanura Maricella in the back there. Peperomia, this one is actually a Peperomia, Ruby Cascade. And then this is Codenanthe Carnosa. This is a Hoya Gracilis. Then some Philodendron Florida right here. It's got some new growth on it, fortunately, because these old leaves are starting to get kind of chlorotic, like they're going to die soon. Another Alocasia Black Velvet. Another Monstera Adansonii back there. I got got by this one and this one when I was at a farmer's market <laughs> this summer. They were just so gorgeous. I got them and I figured, worst case scenario, I'll just give them to one of my friends, but I still have them. So this is a Piper Ornatum. Really, really love this plant. Here's some new growth that's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really great plant. I just hear that it doesn't ship very well, so buyer beware. Um, this is Syndapsis trubii, Moonlight. Philodendron hostatum. 
This is a really, really cool Syngonium. It's got some splash to it. I don't have a species name, so I'm just gonna, or I'm sorry, I don't have a cultivar name, so I'm just gonna put Syngonium Protophyllum on screen. And then there is my Drymonia Chirabogana. And then that wonderful green plant back there is Pilea grandifolia. Moving down. Okay, in the back there, <laughs> uh, Stromanthe, I think it's Talia now, but I, I know it as Stromanthe Sanguinea Triostar. This is a little tiny Philodendron May May. Then there's a piece of pink smoke in there. Not doing too hot anymore. I was feeling pretty good about it, and now I'm not. And then that was a plant that I thought I killed, but it's now coming back to life. That's Peperomia albivitata piccolo banda. Hoya curtisii literally has looked like this since I got it like three years ago. Uh, probably two years ago, but pushing it. Uh, almost three actually, I'd say. Uh, this is Ruelia macoyana. I love this plant. It's great. And it's cheap. Okay, so this is the cuttings of the Philodendron Bloody Mary that I was speaking of at the beginning of this video, which is probably an hour ago at this point. Uh, uh, this is a Peperomia Fraseri. And then some more Peperomia Kimnachii back there, but it's obviously my less loved of the two because I just have it in the back of a shelf and not in a windowsill where it can flourish. Uh, Hoya, I want to say Wiedii, but it could be Ketiana. And then there's a Hoya Carnosa tricolor, or no, 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 Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. And then uh, Primalina Hotai, it doesn't look that good. Probably needs to recover, but I ain't getting rid of it yet. And then Amaranta but I think it's getting tired, just like my other one that was on the bookcase. They sometimes get tired and they just like die back into the pot and then like two months later, they just like come back in full force. This is a plant I tried growing. Clearly it's not doing too well, but it could be just acclimating because it's got all that growth down there that's like really good looking actually. This is a uh, Charita Moonwalker. It's a type of um, uh, Gesneriad. So it's like very closely related to the Primalina Hotai right there, as well as African Violets. This is another Philodendron squamiferum, but as you can see, it hasn't put off leaves in a couple of months, and uh, the, the petioles have kind of faded back to green, as it seems to do over time. Another Stromanthe sanguinea back there, it's just a plain kind, and this is Peperomia persiliata, which I know I'm killing, so I definitely am just kind of leaving it be. And that's the Sansevieria miniature I was talking about in a recent video. Of course, don't know the actual name of it, even though I think like five people commented on the video, but at the top of my head right now, I don't know. Okay, so, oh, I have more down here. So this is a, a Caladium lindenii or Philotanium. Don't buy it, it's a horrible houseplant. And then this is a Tenanthi, this is my fault. It's not a horrible houseplant, it just looks bad because it's my fault. Um, Setosa. And then this, of course, is a Monstera Deliciosa. Literally, it's getting too big for me. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'm gonna give it to one of my friends soon. I have like all those other varieties. I don't really need the green one, I guess. So this is the other Philodendron Gloriosum. It's in the pot back there. It's kind of pre creeping forward though. Um, Philodendron Bernardo Pazii, once again, this is a cutting that I took. Then this is, I, can't, I don't know what this is. Uh, I got this from the Potted Elephant. They gave it to me as like an extra when I ordered one time. And they said it was a Monstera. They didn't have a name on it. And I, I think they have it on their site now as like a Cago Guguensis or something like that, but I don't know. So I'll put that on screen. I just can't guarantee you that it's correct. And then this is a Asparagus Cetaceous, asparagus cetaceous, fantastic plant. Highly, highly recommend. It is such a vibe. Um, this is a Monstera stanleyana variegata. I took a cutting off this recently, and I totally regret it because just like those um, uh, Monstera Peru cuttings that were in that circle shelf back in my living room, I don't think the cutting's taking. I have some trouble rooting um, some Monstera sometimes, like Adansonii, and then the Peru and the stanleyana apparently. So I'm not really surprised, but kind of wish I didn't cut it then. This is Philodendron Ataba Poensi. I also recently cut this one and I have some cuttings elsewhere in my home that I don't think I shared with you earlier in this video. This is a fern. This is uh, Phlebodium aureum, the blue star fern. Then I have a Cissus, uh, Rhombifolia, Elendinica. There is another Peperomia polybotria back there. You can barely see it. And then my Peperomia Incana that I thought was gonna be in a spot that would be easier to show you guys, but it's not really. But it's a Peppermancana, once again. I have two Hoya 
Oh, I got caught on the Monstera. I have two Hoya down here, the one that has the one yellowing leaf. Um, that's another Obscura, but of course there's a lot more on it than just that yellowing leaf. And a Hoya Crassipes back here. Out of all the house plant tours I've ever filmed, this is the one where I'm having <laughs> the most trouble showing you guys everything. Uh, this is a Ficus Altissima. I think I'm gonna get rid of this soon. It's just not doing it for me. There is a Tradescantia Spathaceae variegata back there, the pink plant. Highly recommend, fantastic. Okay, so I just have this window and then the bathroom. We're getting there. This video is definitely gonna be over an hour, but I think around an hour. So this is a Peperomia avertis salata right here. Not really intended to be a hanging plant, but boy is it working as one. I think it looks fantastic. It's typically one that grows upright, vertically, as the name would kind of suggest. Um, then I have this, uh, what is it, Discidia uh, ovata. So the, the watermelon vine, or whatever they call it, you know, you all know. There was another one earlier in this video. I'm getting, <laughs> I've been filming this for a long time now. I know I said this like five times now, but I can't believe I'm still able to spit all these names out at you. So this is a Peperomia dolstedii. This, um, this is garbage. Okay, so I think we're officially going to retire this spider plant. I'm sorry. I'll give it to a friend or something. I'm not just going to throw it out. Don't worry. But it's coming down. It's blocking my view. So I have this Peperomia dolstedii. And it's kind of hanging with this um, Cissus quadrangularis. Then I have this Ripsalis. Um, paradox, a little bit of a thicker variety. And then this is Peperomia Hope. So this is the, it's very similar to the Boivinii, but it's just a little bit more pale green, I would say. So very, very similar, but it grows in just the same manner. And it's such a great hanging house plant. And this is one I have to say, I purchased this as a little tiny, tiny plant like three years ago and it's looked like this big trailing plant for like at least the past year and a half. So although it was a slow starter, once it got growing, it really did not stop. So highly recommend. Another Discidia right here. I bought this as the Green Cascade. Don't know if it's the Oeantha, the Jerry, or whatnot. I get so confused by that. Uh, these are a little embarrassing, I guess. I gotta clean this up, but this is a Peperomia cubensis. I've had this one for like two years now, and I think it's just starting to react poorly starting to brown up a little bit, but it's got all this growth down here. So I'm not too worried. I could salvage a bunch of it. As you saw, I had some cuttings in one of the west windows, but it really does look great down here. So I'm not too worried about it. It's just, it's a little embarrassing, but it's not as embarrassing <laughs> as this kangaroo paw fern. Oh my gosh, I cannot keep up with watering this. I have another kangaroo paw fern that you will see that I have a much easier time with, but this one, I don't know. I'm like, I could clean it up, but I just don't think it's going to even look that good. But you know what? Like I said, I'm not ashamed to show you guys this stuff. I am a person. Um, this, I just watered this yesterday. It still needs to perk back up because I literally water this thing like every like four months. I wish I was not lying. It's just a Dracaena, Janet Craig. It was something I rescued from the plant store. So I don't really have that much heart into it, but it's worth keeping. Alrighty, let's move over to the bathroom. Let's finish up this tour. Okay, <laughs> I could have thrown this out beforehand, but I'm gonna be real with you guys. I have no idea what's been going on with this. Literally like maybe three months ago, this Syndapsis Pictus Exotica just started curling up, whether it was dry or wet. Um, first it was just one vine and then there was the other vine and today is today that I'm probably gonna throw it out because now I'm realizing I am showing it to my audience, but I have literally no idea. The stems look totally fine. It's like literally, putting off new growth it looks like, but the plant is just like decimated. So I don't really know. I should mention this is an east facing window right here. It is frosted for privacy, uh, but it does get a decent amount of light, I would say. There is a little Ripsalis right here. I don't really know what kind it is. It is pretty adorable though. This is a, another Ripsalis. I think this is, um, oh gosh, Pachyterra, Ripsalis Pachyterra, and then a Sansevieria Fernwood. A very sad looking philodendron brantianum. Got a couple chew marks from the cat. Uh, Sansevieria. Oh gosh, what is this one? I think they call it black gold. Black gold because it's like the black inside and then it's yellow on the outside. Dracaena reflexa. I love this plant. It's great. It's super fun. Just a long spindly plant. Some more of that variegated Discidia oeantha. And then inside the window here, we have a couple Hoya. So on the left is Hoya Iris Marie. And then that one in the center is some Hoya Chelsea. 
can't really see the monitor right now, so I'm hoping that it's visible. Um, this is a Hoya Bella, just a little cutting. And then back here, I have a variegated watermelon Peperomia. I actually want to pull this out because it's gorgeous, and I just do not trust at all that you guys are getting a good enough view. So, pardon me, pardon me. But you can see, it is just so gorgeous. Okay, okay. Let's get back to it. And then I just got a little pile of peperomioides right there. Nothing really much to see. This is a rabbit's foot fern. I'm not willing to give up yet. Do you see? It's got life left in it. But I brought this home. It was the second rabbit's foot fern I brought home. And it literally just like fell apart, which is the second time it's happened. I've always heard that these ferns are easy. I love ferns. I'm not really willing to give up on them. But I don't know. I'm trying. I am trying really hard, but this is all we've had for a really long time. we got a little bit right here. A little bit of something, but not much. Okay, three more plants. There is this <laughs> Epipernum panitum siblu blue. I'm like embarrassed to end the video here. Hi everybody, because I feel like these plants are just like so crappy. There's just a little jiboa right here. I need to like turn it because it's just a little jiboa that hangs out in the bathroom here. It's really not the most showy plant. It's just to cover up that shelf that sits on top of the litter box to make it a little bit more nice for us. But, and my kangaroo paw fern that I have in the basket here that I've had so much better luck with. I've only had it for like two months now, mind you, but um, compared to the other one, I'm having a much, much easier time with this one. So that's about it. We've been filming for a really long time, but we are ending here on this anticlimactic little kangaroo paw fern that I still absolutely love. Thank you so much for joining me today for my first house pant tour of 2021. If you're still watching, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. I always enjoy making these videos, even if I'm filming for an hour and a half straight of basically speaking gibberish and testing my memory. I really, really enjoy it. I really also hope that you got something out of this. I hope you learned something new and I hope you got inspired. So thank you again for joining me. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.